Now, a couple of sections ago, you said, uh, and I can replay the tape, that it actually would be slightly easier with Mars in the moon. So surely, if we're looking at delta Vs, it's easier to Mars, right? It is, uh, if you can aero break. And aero breaking is a tricky thing to do right, so you might not aero break all your energy. <laughs> but nonetheless, Mars is not, in terms of the amount of rocket fuel, not drastically harder than the moon. Okay. The trouble is the travel time. That's not really a trouble for robots, but for people, it's definitely a problem. Yeah, okay. It's, it's the human not, not a bigger delta V as long as you can aero break. That's right. But first of all, the distance from the Earth to the Mars varies a lot. The Moon's always the same distance pretty yeah, much. Yeah, pretty much, yep. Uh, but Mars can be 10 times further away, but it's on the far side of the Sun than the near side. Yeah, because this is in kilometers, right? So you're going from 50 million kilometers to 400, 400 million kilometers. That's a lot of kilometer difference. Yep. Um, and the way you want to do it is the whole home and transfer yes. of it that we've talked about before, something like this. And you can only do this at certain crucial times. You can't just launch tomorrow. Yep. You're going to have to pick a so-called launch window. So here, for example, are the next two launch windows at the time of filming. So yep. this is one in October 2024. So you launch from the Earth on the 17th of October 2024 yep. into a home and transfer orbit. And that will take about 330 days, nearly a year, to, to reach Mars. OK. And again, this is optimal, right? We're not talking about worst case. This is the optimal scenario. It's not optimal in terms of how short it is. It's optimal in terms of minimum delta yes, V. Yes, exactly. This is the most economical way. Yes. If you've got fuel to burn, you can do it faster. That's right. Um, but then when you get there... Earth say, is over here, right? Earth has already started to move. Yeah. Um, Earth will probably be going all the way around. That's so, right. Yeah, so Earth will be back over there by that point. Exactly. Then you can't just... If something breaks down, you can't just turn around and come back. You then have to wait for 336 days on Mars until the launch window to go back. So you're now launching Mars on the 20th of August in 2026 when you left October 2024. Yeah. And then it's relatively quick, only 240 days to go back. But then you get back to the Earth um, on the 7th of April 2027 after a total of about three years. So you're, 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 even though you leave October 2024 and you're only taking, you know, nine, ten months to get there, it's going to take you a whole trip of almost three years. And you can't just decide halfway that, sorry, something's going wrong, I want to come back. That's right. On the moon, if you're in trouble, someone you has a heart attack or something, you're four days away from the Earth. Yes, right. Here, if you, if you had a heart attack 10 minutes after leaving, you're a minimum of you know, two to three years away from the Earth. And as we're going to explore in the health section, this is one of the reasons why the complications go through the roof. That's right. Likewise, similarly for other launch windows, the exact figures vary, but it's going to be at least hundreds of days to get there, probably hundreds of days there and hundreds of days back. So, yeah, generally NASA budgets two and a half to three years for these missions, because, again, unless you have lots of fuel laying around but has other factors of getting there, that's the most efficient you can do. We talked about nuclear reactors back in the propulsion section. This is one thing they would be good at. Yes. This is a high delta V. They might allow you to do this much faster. Mm. But if we're stuck with chemical rockets... This is what we got. 